I just figured out how to make sure that everyone can get always get out of a hole if they fall in. It's really simple. You just carry a ladder with you. Everywhere you go, you carry a ladder with you. That way nobody will ever fall into a hole that they can't get out of. Simple. I think the ladder part is really, it's really clear to me. Because when you're just climbing up a ladder, you don't really think about the ladder. It's only when you start losing your grip, that's when you think about the ladder. Then your mind is exactly on the ladder. That's how I, I think about God. Because when my mind's, when I'm doing really well, I'm running down the street, I don't, I don't really think about God. It's when I'm losing my grip, that's when I think about God. I think I'd have more interest in religion if religion was about me. But it's really not. <laughs> it just can't be all about me. That's that's how I get off. That's how I get away from God. I'm trying to do everything else, and it's just it's about God. It's about other people. It's about the church. It's about society. But it's hardly ever about me. It's frustrating. I can't tell you how frustrating that is. So I'm doing my thing. I'm climbing out of the hole, but it never turns out that it was my idea to think about the ladder and make sure my hands and feet are on the ladder. It's always some something else. It's always the universe that tells my brain, oh, I should think about religion. I should think about God. It never comes from inside me. I never want to grip the ladder harder. Make sure I know where I'm going. It's always the other way around. Always comes from upstairs. Then it comes down to me. And that's how I realize that I need religion. So I'm doing my thing. I'm pumping my arms and legs, and I think I'm doing great. But there's an idea that I need to grab the ladder a little tighter. And that usually comes from God. And that message from God, when you orient yourself, you realize, oh, I have a conviction that something is off. I am off balance. I am being convicted by God that I am not on the ladder. I am somewhere else. And I think uh, Paul has an answer about what comes next after conviction. Of course, I mean, there's a, there's a Jesus, but a Christian shouldn't be moving in the right direction. And that is where Paul's Paul comes in in Romans 6. For when you were servants of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit then did you have at that time in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and having become servants of God, you have your fruit of sanctification and the result of eternal life. So your hands might be off the ladder. You might realize this, but you don't really want to flail around and you don't want to really consider the situation too carefully. Instead, you want to look at Romans 6.20. And Paul is pretty much saying is, oh, you should be going on to eternal life. Oh, you should be receiving your reward in Jesus Christ. So just read that. So basically my plan was to walk into a church and get first in line and say, hey, uh, give me all the religion. I need, I need it really fast, quick, quick. But it turns out that wasn't the right question because what I needed was certainly knowledge of God, but I also need understanding of the changes I was going to make to get closer to God, right? So let's watch this movie clip. It's a very, very bad thing, very bad because it rests on a fundamental error. The assumption is that unbelievers outside the church are desperately seeking for God, number one. The second fundamental error is that the purpose of corporate worship on Sunday morning is to reach the lost. Now why are those the two fundamental errors? The first one is that the Bible makes it absolutely clear that in our natural condition, in our fallen state, no one seeks after God. 
The only people who seek after God are those who have been already born again. Seeking after God begins with regeneration. We are the seekers. Now, Aquinas had to answer this question in his day when people said, you know, it sure seems to me that my next door neighbor is searching after Christ, but he's not a believer, and yet the Bible says nobody searches. You know, what's with that? And Aquinas said, here, you see people all around you that are searching for peace of mind, for happiness, for relief from guilt, for meaning and significance to their lives, and you watch them searching desperately for these things, and you say, well, the only thing that can give them that is Christ. And so you assume then that they're searching for that which only God can give them, the benefits of God. They therefore must be seeking after God. Quan says, no. He said, the problem with fallen man is that we seek for the benefits that only God can give us, while at the same time, we're fleeing as fast and as hard as we can from him. So the seeker out there is not seeking for God. He's seeking for a hiding place from God. So get that straight. Second of all, worship is to be the corporate gathering together of the people of God for worship. Okay? Now, you always, you always assume that there's going to be some tears along with the wheat, and there's going to be unbelievers present in the worship, and you've got to be sensitive to that, as Paul indicates to the Corinthians. So you have to, at some point, uh, address the lost in your sermon. But fundamentally, what's going on on Sunday morning are the believers gathering on the Lord's Day to attend the study of the uh, sit at the feet of the apostles, to gather for prayer, for worship, adoration, the celebration of the Lord's Supper. And what we should be most concerned about in our worship is what is it that pleases God, right. not what, what is it that pleases the unbeliever. Right. This, is, this is one of the great tragedies of our day, I think. And it's going to really cost the church and not, it's not going to take a long time. It already has cost the church. I think that's brilliant, and I agree with every word of it, and that's the very hard. I'm cutting out the guy who isn't R.C. Sprawl. It's left. It's also a strategy of unbelief mm -hmm. in this regard. We're still looking for Joseph's pants. Now, what do I mean by that? <laughs> in the last sermon that Martin Luther ever preached two days before he fell ill and died, he preached on the gospel, and he preached on his concern that despite of the awakening of the Reformation and the recovering of the light of the gospel, which was now being preached and was available to the people, the people were still uh, addicted to relics. And rather than read the scriptures, they would go to Trier, where they had in their uh, relics uh, uh, the pants of Joseph or a vial of milk from the breast of Mary. And what he was saying is, is that what people were looking for was power. And they believed that there was power in the pants of Joseph. Now, we don't go around looking for the pants of Joseph now. Now the power is in the program. Whereas what Luther says, then what we've been hearing and what we just heard from your message is that the power of the Holy Ghost is mediated in and through the Word. Amen. Amen. When are we going to believe that? That's when I say it's a strategy of unbelief. The minister wants to grow his church. The minister wants to see success. And so he's looking for all these programs, all these techniques to get people to come in, but he never goes over the bridge and gets to the Word. If you want a power in your church, be an expository preacher. Preach the Word. Because that's where the Spirit is. Isn't, isn't that God's strategy? Yes. And if we believe God's strategy, we're going to preach the Amen. Word. Amen. I've got this list of things in like the local church that aren't about me and it's taken me a long time to make the list but I, it's, it's gotten kind of long 
So I'll just go into what uh, Jesus said. He said, Light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. I, don't, I think Jesus was talking about truth and goodness. And I found a distortion of the Bible verse. And I think Jesus is saying, well, the, the distortion is, when your two eyes become one, your body will be filled with light. Distortion's just kind of fascinating. And I think you have to replace light with, or when you're looking at uh, the truth and goodness of God, somehow that affects you and your body. And certainly, if, you're, if your eyes are on truth and goodness, you're going to react differently. Your body's going to act differently than if you're looking at the wrong thing, right? So back to the ladder, ladder metaphor. So you're falling off the ladder, and you want yourself back on the ladder. And God wants you to be useful to God. So the best, best possible ending to this whole ladder thing is if you make space in your life for something that's useful to God, and then you keep that space useful to God, and eventually, if you land on your feet, you can say, praise God, hallelujah. All right?